If we let the races become strong again, they will build their ideology a castle. If my ancestors, the Nazis, had won the war, you would probably be a slave now. And this SS castle behind me would be the center of a nightmarish world in which we would all live today. In Nazi Germany in 1940, in the midst of an apocalyptic battle between the forces of good and evil, SS Überdemon Heinrich Himmler already plans for the time after victory and intends to make this SS castle the center of a new great Germanic empire. The center of a new world order dominated by leading SS generals wearing skull rings who would gather right here in front of me at the SS castle Wewitzburg. You see this Nazi castle? What you see is only the tip of the iceberg. This place matches every weird fantasy you've ever had about Nazis and castles. When I wrote this script, people commented that this story is really hard to believe. Also, because no one else has ever talked about these things before. A story even harder to believe than is a Koch's lampshades made of human rem in Kamp Buchenwald. Imagine if they had built a castle for evil. Well, they did. Everything you ever wanted to know about this Nazi castle will be answered in this video, plus some things you didn't want to know. I sh** you not, there are two crows mating right here on the Nazi castle. Himmler's insane fantasies of making this castle, this sanctuary of the SS, the new center of a world in which the Nazis won the war. The center of a thousand year German Reich, the capital of hell, the pandemonium. These walls have seen a lot. Dozens of legends surround this Nazi temple of doom and it's time to set a few things right. This is an Indiana Jones Nazi story that became real. This castle is the wedding church of a perverted form of esotericism with the Nazis. The Holy Grail, King Arthur and the Spear of Destiny. They are all connected with this castle and with Heinrich Himmler, Occultist and Reichsführer SS. And because what you're about to hear is so hard to believe, I will add footnotes with the scientific sources in the video description below. I have spent months going through all the scientific literature for you so that you guys can finally know what the truth is about the Vatican of the SS and separate it from the total bullshit you find here in abundance on YouTube. That is until the sacrificial victim was brought in. Heinrich Himmler produced a ceremonial knife from under his robes. The screams of the sacrificial victim filled the chamber. Whenever there's no evidence for a statement made in the literature, I will indicate it in the lower left corner. The atrocities that happened deep down here in the castle's witch cellar. Satanic rituals in the crypt of the castle here under the swastika. An American lieutenant colonel with diabolic eyebrows. The temple of Set and this Nazi temple. The holy lands of Longinus, the spear of destiny that pierced Jesus. When Hitler stole it in 1938 and brought it to Germany, he is said to have believed that it would make him invincible. The official SS construction plan with this castle, the cathedral of the SS, forming the tip of a spear. The infamous Black Sun here in the SS General's Hall, a combination of four swastikas and six mirrored SS runes called Sieg runes, victory runes. Neo-Nazis from Buffalo to Christchurch using the Black Sun and its victory runes for exactly one single reason. Nazi skull rings collected from fallen SS officers and kept here in the castle in a chest. This Germanic warrior, the forefather of all of us Germans, who became so important to the Nazis together with this Germanic sanctuary of the Nazis. Everything is connected with this castle. And yes, it sounds like fantasy, but also Thor's hammer, the Holy Grail and King Arthur. It's getting ridiculous and it's all so hard to believe because the Reichsführer SS must have slowly drifted into madness when he built this castle here. As I see it after a month of research, this Nazi castle is indeed Heinrich Himmler's Black Camelot with him as Nazi author and I will prove to you why. Yep, it's that time of the year again. On a cold winter day in January 1933, Himmler and Hitler were sitting by the fireplace here in Kassel Grevenburg, behind me, not far from the SS castle. Beautiful place. Unfortunately, the former owner was an Uber Nazi.
while Hitler went more and more insane in his attempt to conquer the world. His Reichsführer SS went insane here, trying to find proof of the origins of what he called in his madness the Germanic master race. Himmler was obsessed with ancient Germanic and Nordic mythology. For him, both the Germanic and the Nordic mythology represented Aryan values. And he wanted to incorporate both into the ideology of Nazi Germany and make them part of his Nazi temple. When Himmler and Adolf were sitting so romantically by the fireplace here, Himmler certainly thought of his visit to these two monuments nearby. A statue of an old Germanic warrior and this mysterious rock formation. For him, without any doubt, an old Germanic sanctuary. So now, a Nazi sanctuary. After visiting these places, for Himmler, the case was clear. This area here in Western Germany had to be the heartland of what he called the Aryan Nordic race. Himmler, in his madness, called it the Germanic master race. Now let me make it very clear, there is no such thing as human races, there is especially no racial supremacy whatsoever and I condemn everything that this obsessed fanatic has ever thought and said. But for Himmler, the statue of Arminius was the perfect symbol of Germanic racial supremacy. Arminius, the victorious Germanic warrior without whom Germany would never have existed. I will come back to this place later in the story, but for Himmler, this statue was nothing less than a gigantic Germanic fa right here near his SS castle. Himmler decided to build a castle, a castle for his sickening ideas of human races and racial supremacy. A center of racism, a sanctuary for the SS as the racist elite of Nazi Germany. A castle for himself to reside there as the grandmaster of the SS, as some kind of King Arthur with his 12 most important SS generals, the SS Knights of the Round Table. And Wewelsburg Castle was the perfect place for Heinrich Pendragon. Here in the heartland of our forefathers, the Germanic tribes, at a short distance to his Germanic sanctuary. A Nazi castle with a long history of horror. Before the Nazis, this castle served as a blood court where witches were incarcerated and tortured deep down here in this basement. Apparently just the right setting for Himmler, who is now expanding this witch torture castle. After the ultimate victory, the end Sieg, the victory under the two Sieg runes, the victory runes. He wants the SS castle to become the midpoint of the new world, a world in which the Nazis had won the war, a world dominated by Adolf Hitler, him and his SS, a world in which you and I would be dominated by these SS leaders wearing death set rings. More about the Nazi rings later in the story. Wait, is that again Hermann Fegelein? But this time wearing the Nazi skull ring and with an injured arm after he was blown up at the Wolfslayer together with Hitler? Wow. Nothing in this world stands for pure evil more than the SS. Black uniforms, they were the terror. Their badge was the death head and they murdered men in millions. An army of genocidal maniacs about which Himmler once said, I know that people in Germany already feel sick only by looking at their black uniforms. The SS was the Nazi elite of the country. To become a member of the SS, one had to pass Himmler's racial examination. Only those who Himmler considered the ideal type of what he thought was the Nordic master race should be accepted. 10 to 15 percent of all candidates. You had to be tall, you had to pass an intelligence test. Have you noticed that our caps have actually got little pictures of skulls on them? Hands. Are we the baddies? And you had to prove that you don't have Jewish blood. Throughout history, the color black has always evoked feelings of fear and respect. Those who wish to dominate others choose black clothing. Obersturmbahnführer, <laughs> executioners, policemen, priests, judges. This is the most unprofessional way to try a case. Death eaters, black water, 
Black Rock, you get what I mean. The SS uniforms made by Hugo Boss, Skull and Crossbones were designed to intimidate you, just like the Jolly Roger did during the days of sea piracy. The Skull, as in you're a Nazi until you die, symbolizes the willingness of the SS to self-sacrifice for the Führer at any time, which they also did and they did it to the very end and even after Hitler was already dead. The most fanatical army of all time. Times. And in the 1940s, this castle was to become the sanctuary of Himmler's Black Order. Only SS generals, the Obergruppenführer, were allowed to enter here. Himmler wanted the SS to remain mysterious and incomprehensible to the people, evoking fear by its mere existence. On his order, the SS castle was to be kept secret from the public, just like the Grail castle from the legend. Newspapers and books were not allowed to mention Himmler's secret castle. The people did not know about Vivitzburg. And Himmler's Nazi architect Hermann Bartels had gigantic plans to build the world's new center here, the Arcanum of the Uber-Racists. Himmler and Bartels set up a concentration camp here. 3,900 prisoners had to build the castle. More than 1,200 of them died, almost every third person. Imagine Imagine being enslaved and dying building a castle for evil. That's exactly what happened here. Himmler's plan was to tear down the entire village and to build a gigantic center of racism here, with the castle as the spearhead of the entire complex, which was supposed to be in the shape of a spear. The Spear of Destiny, also called the Lance of Longinus, is said to have been the lance used by the Roman centurion Longinus to pierce Jesus Christ. Longinus pierced Jesus to check if he was dead. The Bible describes the scene in John 19.34. Longinus, today a saint, pierced Jesus and through contact with Jesus' blood, the lance is said to make its owner invincible making it the first elder went in history long before J.K. Rowling turned into a transphobic. On the lance is written, lance and nail of our Lord. Parts of the crucifixion nail of Jesus are said to be on that lance. And Hitler desperately wanted to get his hands on it. Before Adolf decided to become the Führer, he tried to sell self-painted postcards in Austria no one ever wanted to buy. During the time, Adolf saw the Holy Land for the first time in Vienna. The legend says that its owner is the true ruler of the world and becomes invincible. Is that why Hitler was so desperate to get his hands on the spear? We don't know, but what we do know is the first thing Hitler does after he invades Austria, he immediately orders the SS to protect the Holy Land in the Vienna castle. Then he remarkably waits until the 15th of March, which is exactly the Memorial Day of St. Longinus, takes the Holy Land and brings it to Germany. Can it be really pure coincidence that Himmler's plan for this castle looks like a spear? What is this place? What was its real purpose? Has Himmler in fact built a new grail castle here? Trevor Ravenscroft claims that Himmler brought a copy of the lands to the castle. There is no evidence for his theory, but there is strong evidence that what you're looking at is indeed Himmler's Black Camelot and I will show you why. Up here in the castle's north tower is the SS Generals Hall. Leading SS Generals were supposed to gather up here, performing rituals and the medieval coats of arms of the SS Generals were to be hung on the wall here. Himmler wanted to build the SS on the basis of the old German Order of Knights. SS Knights who now carry machine guns instead of swords. There were 12 knights of King Arthur's Round Table. Here, in the SS General's Hall, there are exactly 12 columns, 12 windows, 12 niches and the Black Sun with exactly 12 Sieg runes. If one of the SS generals died, his coat of arms was to be burned down here in the SS crypt on one of 12 pedestals. The rooms of the castle were titled King Arthur, King Heinrich and Grail. 
Most legends describe the grail as a miraculous object in the form of a chalice, which is said to bring eternal youth. The legend says, together with a bleeding lance, it is guarded in an inaccessible castle by the Grail King and the Grail Knight. The Holy Grail, the cup that Jesus drank from at the Last Supper. The Bible describes the scene in Mark 14.23. But Heinrich Himmler, the occultist, hated the church. He instead believed in old German legends, in the German medieval poet Wolfram von Eschenbach, who described the Holy Grail in his poem Parsifal from the year 1200 as a stone. And there was such a stone kept here in a room called the Grail Room. Is this Himmler's Grail Castle? Decide for yourself. But for me it's clear what King Heinrich intended to do here. Himmler, the key architect of the Holocaust and responsible for the extermination of millions of people. He saw the SS as an antichrist order to reinstate pure Germanic culture. He built a library in the castle and told his SS researchers to find evidence that the church burned our forefathers, the Germanic people, as witches. In his words, our mothers and daughters. For him, Christianity was the enemy of Germanic culture and race. Instead of the church, Germanic mythology was to become the new substitute religion of Germany. He sent his Nazi archaeologists, yes, Nazi archaeologists as in the movies, to find traces of the old Germanic tribes for him and they eventually found them during their excavations. Himmler wanted the castle as a school for his SS with a strong focus on Germanic history and as a tool for ideological training. For Himmler, this guy, Arminius, was the uber-Germanic. He wanted to go back to what he thought were Germanic values. Items like this SS dagger were created. My honor is called loyalty. Ideological political training. The SS would go to school here and learn how to hate. And he and his SS leaders met here in the castle in June 1941 at the fireplace to swear an oath together that the extermination war against the Soviet Union was right and in line with their SS ideology. What came after the reunion here were one of the worst war crimes in history with millions of deaths. And these SS leaders, they wore death hat rings at their gatherings. The rings were a personal award by Heinrich Himmler for leading SS members and a sign of loyalty to the Führer. Inside the ring was Himmler's signature, the name of the SS person wearing it, and on the outside Nazi runes symbolizing loyalty and the Aryan race. Every time a leading member of the SS died, his ring was to be returned to this castle and to be kept in a treasure chest, here as a sign for his ongoing membership in the SS even after death. The skull ring was in effect the memorial for the dead SS member. If this is the moment now where you're convinced that I made it all up, that this is all fantasy, it gets even more bizarre. The rings were inspired by the story of the pagan god Thor, who supposedly possessed a silver ring on which people could swear an oath. Imagine showing up at work one day and your boss telling you, today you're going to look for Thor's hammer. In May 1940, Himmler turned to fellow Nazi Walter Wüst, head of Das Ahnenerbe, the Germanic Ancestral Heritage Foundation. Himmler ordered Wüst to find all places in the northern German Aryan culture world where an understanding of Thor's hammer or the flying or thrown hammer exists and to collect all evidence. Himmler actually really believed that Thor's hammer had existed and thought it was a highly developed weapon of all forefathers. Himmler ordered Karl Maria Willigut, another Nazi esoteric called Weiss Thor, White Thor, to design the skull rings for him. Weiss Thor, who was later expelled from the SS when they found out that he was in fact a runaway from a psychiatric hospital and an alcoholic, he designed the rings together with a whole set of runes for him, which he based on Germanic runes. So now we have this mentally disturbed SS guy who calls himself White Thor and who is now making the scurrings for Himmler and his Camelot castle. Do you even wonder?
Apparently, Himmler and Weistor wanted the SS to remember the following when wearing the death head ring. A swastika symbolizing what the Nazi thought was the power of the Aryan race. Two double runes as a sign of salvation. Faith and loyalty symbolized by the rune Hagal and the Sieg rune in a triangle representing the power of the sun. The Black Sun. Why did mentally ill Weistor design it for Himmler? What is the Black Sun supposed to symbolize here in the middle of the SS General's Hall? Is the Black Sun the center of the castle and therefore the center of the new Germanic Empire? The Black Sun is a metaphor used in literature for sadness, loss, despair and destruction. Was it meant to symbolize Himmler's Black Order bringing destruction and despair? We don't know. But neo-Nazi murderers and fascists today use the Black Sun because showing the symbol is not punishable by law. It unites them. What if the Nazis and Japan had won the war? This famous book answers the question. The American East Coast is German, the West Coast is Japanese. An absolutely must read, you should absolutely read this book. Link in the video description below. All right, let's go down here to the crypt. Himmler wanted to make the Germanic and the Nordic mythology part of his castle. Maybe that's why it's called the Nazi Temple of Doom with links to Valhalla and with the crypt down here in the castle that was also called Valhalla. Valhalla in the Nordic mythology, the place for warriors fallen in battles. All these mass murdering SS generals doing rituals here, wearing Nazi skull rings, these Nazi daggers, wearing loyalty to a Hitler, awarded to SS members in these yearly dark ceremonies, and then this insane psychiatry runaway SS guy designing the Nazi runes and the skull rings, and all this Germanic and racial supremacy bullshit, and the whole story about this spear and the grail it all feels like a bad dream as if this is all a bad science fiction nazi movie except it's all actually true it really happened if you like these videos only you can save the channel if i can't find enough supporters on patreon this unfortunately will be the last video Why did these Nazis need to have their castle always so far away from everything? It's here, finally made it. Gavenburg Nazi fucking castle. Look at this alley though. Quite fancy, isn't it? On my way to the Arminius monument. Bloody hell. Oh, Lord. Why? Why always? There he is, the godfather of Germany. Good morning, on my way to the Extensteine. Closed, of course. And another closed restaurant, of course. And then it's really next to a primary school. Imagine growing up here in this village, going to school really next to the Uber Nazi castle. 